What's up YouTube, I'm Mike. Today I'm back with a response video. I I've been sitting here debating on whether or not to make this video. I know a lot of you guys in my audience seem to really like this Dr. Todd Lee guy. I've watched some of his content before uh, when with Kurt Havens and they were yammering on about is master on a serm and they kept arguing with each other each other nobody there was never a consensus or any actual fucking science put forth which is what my experience with the dr todd lee has been is that he talks a good game but none of the shit that he says actually seems to be backed up by any factual fucking data so the somebody in my my discord asked me to look at his video everything you need to know about nandrolone the video should have been titled everything i don't know about nandrolone because everything he said the first half of this video, which was as far as I was able to make it, is total categorical fucking bullshit. I don't know what the fuck you guys find so entertaining or enjoyable about this guy, but he absolutely does not know what the fuck he's talking about. In the first part of the video, he goes on to describe why it is that DECA causes, um, or Nandrolone causes uh, gyno. And he explains that 19 nor drugs antagonize the, uh, or agonize the uh, progesterone receptor and cause upregulation of the estrogen receptor. So he even he's talking about estrogen receptor alpha, upregulation of this and downregulation of that. And he explains that this is the causal factor uh, for gyno induced by 19 nor compounds. And he even goes so far as to say, you know, if you go get your blood work done, like you get gyno and then you go get your blood work done, and you may find that, that your estrogen level hasn't actually increased. But the reason that you're still getting gyno is because the estrogen receptor has been upregulated. So the estrogen that was in your body is already is enough to ought to cause the gyno because it's now binding at a higher affinity which of course is contradictory to what he said right before that where he admits that nandrolone nandrolone itself does aromatate aromatize at about 20 percent the rate of testosterone so you would expect to find an increased amount of estrogen. I don't know why your E2 would be the same, but the fact remains that it is absolutely not upregulation of the andro of the estrogen receptor that causes the gyno. I happen to know this for a fact because I used to believe bullshit like he's parroting right here. So in the first two cycles that I ran with the 19 nor compound, the first was DECA, the second was Trenbolone. On both of those cycles, I got unsightly gyno that is now permanent, by the way. I got permanent gyno running both of those cycles. And during both of those cycles, I crashed my estrogen into the toilet. I backed this up with blood work. The reason I crashed my estrogen into the toilet is because I believe the bullshit that this idiot is parroting right here. So when I had gyno, I kept increasing my, my Remedex dose trying to get rid of it. I knocked my estrogen completely out and still had gyno. The gyno never subsided until I treated the actual problem, which is when you agonize the, the progesterone receptor, it releases prolactin. 19 nor drugs cause gyno, it's prolactin induced gyno. So you can crash your estrogen all the way into the fucking toilet and it will not alleviate the symptoms. If you take cabergoline, Cabergoline will stop the production of prolactin and will reduce the biosynthesis of progesterone. That is the pathway that causes 19 nor drugs to produce gyno. It has absolutely nothing to fucking do with upregulation of the, of the uh, estrogen receptor. If he was right, then what I have experienced in real world practice could never have happened on either side. One, crashing my estrogen should have reduced the gyno. And two, if it was if it was estrogen receptor related, then adding caber wouldn't solve the problem. So I have covered this on both sides of the fence. Crushing your estrogen will not prevent the gyno. The only thing that does prevent the gyno is preventing the production of prolactin, lowering your prolactin level with a drug like cabergoline, which if he was right, cabergoline wouldn't work and it does. So please do not listen to people like this who do not know what the fuck they are talking about. This is what fucks guys up. 
I have permanent gyno that you could that they were able to detect on my CT scan because of the fact that I listened to fucking low life pieces of shit like Dr. Todd fucking Lee regurgitate absolute bullshit science. These people are injuring men every single day by making this shit up and regurgitating it. I don't know what the fuck he's a doctor of. A doctor of fucking bullshit? Because nothing he's saying in this video is true. Then he goes on to double the fuck down and say that DECA does not actually heal joints. That the, 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 the joint healing effects of DECA are short term only. That they, they, they that DECA temporarily re, uh, uh, upregulates cortisone or cortisol. I can't even remember. When I, when I started listening to this, I was ready to smash my fucking computer monitor. It has been shown in countless fucking studies that nandrolone increases collagen synthesis. The, the problem with this being true is that not only does it does it produce collagen and, 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 and uh, upregulate the creation of soft tissue in like joints, it also does it in muscles and it can do it in your heart. So it can actually increase the collagen in your heart muscle, which could lead to cardio remapping. So it's the, the, the jury is not out on whether or not nandrolone lubricates or, or rebuilds the collagen in your joints. This is another thing that I have field tested myself. Before I started taking DECA, as I have said at length in my DECA, in my Nangelone video, I could literally feel my shoulder joint every time I rotated my arm like this. I could hear or feel grinding in the joint. It would pop, it would stick, it would hang. I was constantly having shoulder pain, shoulder impingements. I had chronic nagging elbow pain. I was never able to fully enjoy my chest days or my fucking like tricep days because the, the limiting factor was never my strength, it was always my joints. Since I started running 200 milligrams of Nandrolone decanoate a week, I have had zero joint pain. This has been going on for over two months now. Rotating my shoulder today causes absolutely no pain. If what he was saying was true, I should still feel the joint grinding bone on bone because nothing inside the joint would have changed. I would just be purely getting a pain relieving, a temporary pain relieving effect from the nandrolone. So I shouldn't have a joint that suddenly feels like I'm 16 instead of 43 if the bullshit he was perpetuating was true. The fact of the matter it remains, it's not true. Nandrolone is known to create, to upregulate the creation of collagen and it does it all over the body. So this is both a good and potentially bad thing depending on your concerns about Nandrolone and heart health. So please, Stop listening to people on YouTube just because they put doctor in front of their name. This guy does not know what the fuck he is talking about. And, and listening to shit like this can permanently fuck you up. At some point in my life, I am probably going to end up getting a, a gyno surgery because one of the reasons, you know, I'm always talking to you guys about, about, about you know, my different body compositions and a lot of you guys say hey man I think you look I think you look your best at 190 when you're really peeled and lean the problem with me being really peeled and lean at 190 is that the permanent gyno that I have is apparent I can see it you can see it it's not like really unsightly but it's enough to make me self-conscious when I keep a little bit when I keep my my pecs and my upper body a little bit more full then the gyno, the, the visibility of the gyno disappears. So until I decide to get that permanently repaired, I don't like being lean enough that you can see it. You know, it's, it's bad walking down the beach and you get these looks and it's like, oh my God, this guy's got peeled abs and veins and, you know, shoulders and everything's popping out everywhere. It's like, oh, what are those puffy nipples about? Dude, that, that shit's embarrassing and it is caused by listening to bullshit like the supposedly everything you need to know about Nandrolone. This is absolutely categorically untrue. Please do your own research. Be very careful what you listen to on the internet and do not, if you get gyno, you need to solve that problem immediately before it becomes permanent like mine. 
My gyno will never go away until I get surgery. And it is directly caused by the misinformation and bro science that is floating around this fucking community. It's why I created my channel, trying to dispel these myths. I will never for the life of me understand what you guys find so entertaining about this fucking idiot. As of yet, I have never seen him know what the fuck he is talking about. So, Dr. Todd Lee needs to put forth some fucking data to back up his claim because I can show you crashed fucking estrogen and pictures of full-blown gyno. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.